It is very windy. Very windy. My wife's using my phone, so I couldn't use my phone right now. But I might have to. Because I don't know if this is going to let me stay where I'm at. But the book of James, I'm here. Let's see if we can stay on this on this page. Um, I want to I want to just kind of encourage you this morning with something that James kind of goes over and kind of teaches us. Um, and in the times that we're in, um, it's kind of. Uh, it's different, and I'm not going to get into the fact that that um, this is um, that this is you know we, we always we we understand that we're we're unfamiliar territory, and we've been doing this thing for like five weeks now, and and uh, you know it, it is unfamiliar. It is a kind of a different thing for us. Friday and then tomorrow and we don't know what the rest of the week's going to be like. We don't know what it's going to look like in phase two. We don't know what, what's going to happen. So, But I want to read something to you out of James chapter 1 beginning at verse 2. And he says, My brothers, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Or the King James says, when you face many trials. Consider it all joy. Count it all joy when you, when you have a bad situation. Count it all joy when you have a difficult place. Count it all joy when things don't look as good as they did. Count it all joy when things kind of look bleak or look kind of different. And we're in a place right now that fits all of that. Things look different. Things are different. Things are run different. You know, everybody, I keep hearing everybody say, uh, I can't wait to get back to normal. What's normal going to look like? Normal's changed for us. It has changed. But James is saying here, count it all joy. What does that word joy mean? What is that? What is joy? Everybody says, well, you know, I'm happy. No, joy is not happy. The, the, the Webster says that joy is a, 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 a pleasure, a pleasure and, ex, and happiness. It's extreme pleasure and happiness. Joy is something that's beyond being just happy. <laughs> Listen. You can be in the saddest moment of your life. You can be in the saddest situation of your life, and you can have joy. You can have joy unspeakable and full of glory. But you can't have, you can't be in a sad place and have happiness. When you're sad, you're sad. I mean, you try to, you, everybody says, hey, take off that sad face, put on a happy face. It, it's hard to do that when things are really that bad. But even in the sadness, even in that midnight time, even in that most difficult time, you can have joy and you can have full joy. Romans chapter 14 verse 17 says that the kingdom of God is, is not meat and eat and drinking. It's righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Spirit. So the kingdom of God is made up of righteousness, joy and peace James is saying here that even in your difficult moments even in a middle of a pandemic you can live in joy pastor how am I gonna have joy I can't even I can't even hug a neck today I can't even shake a hand today no we can't but despite that we still have joy because we have the spirit of the Lord that's within us in Galatians 5.22, it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. And the, listen, the fruit of the Spirit, we all know these. It's love. And guess what the second one it is? Joy. Love, 
joy. Joy is a fruit of the Spirit. Joy is given to us when the Spirit of the Lord comes to live within us and the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in us. Joy is something that is posited within us. Listen, joy is a fruit that we should, pr should produce. We talk about the fruit of the Spirit, and that's what we that's what we produce out. Because Galatians all talk, talks about the work of the flesh, but we're not going there. Joy is something that we should produce out of our lives. Other people around us that don't know Jesus need to understand why you have so much joy in the middle of a pandemic. Because the Spirit of God has now dwelled in your body and now lives in you and His Holy Spirit is producing joy that nothing else can produce. In Nehemiah chapter 8, I believe, in verse 10, it might be chapter 18, uh, I know this, I know it's, it's talking to Nehemiah, he says a lot of things, but at the end of Nehemiah, in that, in that verse, he says this, the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. So if the joy of the Lord is our strength, if the enemy can take my joy, he takes my strength. If the enemy can steal my joy, he weakens me. It puts me in a state that's weaker than what I need to be in where his attack comes upon me and I don't have the strength to fight it. I don't have the strength to even pray. I don't have the strength to even ask God to help me because I don't have joy in my life. Listen, it's not about being happy. You know, I get happy when I see my granddaughter on FaceTime. I get happy when my grandson comes up in a, in my, into the living room and says, Papa, I love you, just because he says it. I, I'm happy. I have joy because I'm saved this morning. <laughs> I have joy because I've been called by the name of the Most High God. I have joy because He has set me free and delivered me and placed my feet on solid ground. I have joy because He's filled me with His Spirit and put His power to dwell in me. See, it's not just about being happy. You know, the word blessed can relate to being happy sometimes. You know, when God blesses you, you walk around happy. But joy is in the middle of a crisis. Joy is in the middle of, of, of a disturbance in your, in your spirit. Joy is, in the, is when something is just, just, is just come against you that midnight hour. Listen. The disciples were in a boat in a storm. But they didn't have enough faith to even understand it. They had to call upon Jesus from a nap and wake him up. And I know we know that story, and I know that story is, is famous and familiar, but I want to say something. As I was looking at that this week, the beauty thing to me about that is that Jesus sleeps through the storm. <laughs> he can sleep through the storm. They didn't have joy, they had fear. They didn't have happy time they were fearful but when Jesus put his hand out and said peace be still I guarantee you it was more than just being happy they were joyful that he was on the boat with them listen the coronavirus has changed our society it's changed the way we do church it's changed the way we even do family events there's birthday parties that people can't even attend listen worse than that there's people that are passing away and you can't even have a funeral service for a loved one. Because we can't gather together in groups at this time. But I just want to encourage you today that despite what's going on around me, and listen, I'm not going to get into the politics of things. Are we being told everything? Probably not. Are we being exaggerated? Maybe. I'm not going to get into what caused this, where it came from. Oh, people are saying this is the, the sign of the end times. I, I'm not going to say yay or nay. I'm going to say that it doesn't matter to me what it is. 
my God's in control and it's going to do, it's going to accomplish what he wants it to accomplish in my life, in our church's life. This pandemic is not going to leave till God is done with it. We got to understand that. Yeah, we need to pray for it to go. But we need to understand also that, listen, God didn't bring it here. God didn't bring it on us. But God is using it to wake up the church, to tell the church, it's not about you anymore. It's about me still. So I can have joy. I can, I can go to bed at night and go to sleep and have joy in my heart. I may be saddened because of what's going on. It hurts that I can't talk to you face to face, that I can't hug your neck and embrace you. It's killing me right now. Even my own sister said, can I get a hug? I said, no, because we ain't been in the same household. It's ridiculous. I understand it. But it's what they're, re it's what they're recommending. Well, Pastor, don't you have faith? Yes, I have faith. But I also need to use wisdom. But I also have joy. Listen, he also says this. <laughs> After he says that you count it all joy when you face many trials, knowing that trying of your faith develops patience. So through this pandemic, God has also increased our patience. Amen? <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> Is he still working on you? I think so. So it's through our faith that develops patience. But let patience perfect perfect its work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. That's the word of God. Let this thing finish what it's got to do in your life. Let God complete what he's doing in your life through this pandemic. Don't get impatient with it. Trust God. Pray that it goes away. Absolutely. Pray, pray that it goes away. Pray that the, the medical people and, and those in, and our leaders use wisdom how they approach things. But understand, even in this place, even in this place, I'm about to quote something from my old pastor, a song that he wrote. Even in this place, sufficient is his grace. It will carry us through, church. It will get us to the other side. It will get us to that next place. It will get us to tomorrow. It will carry us through the next day. Every time we hear something, if it's, if it's a praise report, we need to give him glory. If it's something sad, we need to go to our knees and say, God, leave, move right now. Prayer lives have changed. Families have changed. Communities have changed. Nations have changed. But the one thing that I believe has rang true through all of this is that joy is still there. In the book of Psalms, I think it's in chapter 30, I'm going to come to a close. I'm not telling you I'm not going to keep you very long. But if we let these things take place, I'm going to get to Psalms in a minute. But James also says, if any man, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all men liberty, liberty, liberally, without criticism, and it'll be given to you. So he's telling us that even in this place, even in this time, we can have joy, joy unspeakable and full of glory. We can have joy that, that takes us through into the next place, that, that through that joy, our faith is going to work patience in us that we're going to be able to wake this thing through and let God finish what he started in us. I'm going to bring this thing to a close. Somebody said amen to that. I've never experienced anything like this. None of, none of us have. I did find out through looking at social media and, and other other areas, I've heard that I think they said 80,000, I think it was 80,000, I may be wrong on my numbers, churches 
are doing live stream message services that's never done them before. Yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, there's one church that said they're getting about 11,000 views every Sunday. 11,000 people. Listen, the gospel's going out. The word of God's being preached. People are being touched. You know, my question is, what is this going to look like when it's all said and done? What is it going to look like? I don't know yet. I have a message for our church the day we get back to in our building. Um, and I'm going to give you the title now. And it's not, it's not a pun on, on what's happening. The, the title of my message when we get back is Return to Church. And it's not about returning to this building. It's about returning to the true church. And I'll give you that message that Sunday. But I want to close out with this. Psalms 30, I think it's verse 5. I'm not going to quote all of them. I'm going to quote parts of it. It says this. Though tears or sorrow or sadness may come through the night, but joy comes in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. Not happiness, not feel good, joy. An inner, listen, if you look up in, the, in James, if you look up the Strong's Concordance, and you look at that word joy, the definition of that word there is an inner peace, an inner calmness. Listen, an inner confidence. That's strong, church. That's strong. That even through this, we can have confidence. Why? Because our hope is in Jesus and him alone. I wanted to read some of that to you from a different translation. And, and I may I may try. If you have the Bible app on your phone, look at the, the um, what is it called there? The Passion Translation. And look at James. Read what it says in there. It's, it's, a, it's powerful. The message is a powerful quote for that, for that text as well. So read those. If you have the Bible app, read those. The Passion and the Message Translation of James 1-2. Uh, and, and look at it. It, just, it expounds on it even greater. But I just want you to understand this morning, church. I hear people say that, well, you know, we haven't reached the peak. Some say, well, we've reached the peak. Some say that this this winter may be another, a, a, another course of this thing. And it could be even deadlier than this one. You know what? Let them predict what they want to predict. My God is in control. My God's on the throne. And you know what? According to his word, joy is going to come in the morning. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you this morning. Lord, I, I know that we have brought people here, and I, I know things have been cut short today. And It's not that we cut it short. We just, we worshiped. We entered into your presence. You met us here. I feel you here right now. Your word has went forth to encourage us that we can have joy that our joy will be in the morning, that the joy of the Lord is our strength, that even through this pandemic, even through the situation that we're in, we can count it all joy because you're doing a work within us to perfect our patience, to increase our faith. And Father, I look around this morning and I see lives here that are serving you. But I'm going to reach out to those that may be out there on live stream this morning that don't know you. Maybe right now they don't have joy. They don't understand how I can have joy. I reach out to them and I ask you this morning, if you're in a place out there that's on social media, and if you're watching this, or you're watching it through with somebody, or through a watch party, or however how you're watching it, or maybe you're going to watch it later, I ask you this. If you don't have joy this morning in your heart, it's because Jesus is not reigning in your life. And you can fix that. I do this every time I close with these live stream messages because I feel 
this is the way we need to reach out. If you're if you're out there and you and you, and you need this joy and you're looking, you're, you're trying to find relief. I'm not saying it, it's going to take it away. It's going to help you live through it. If you'll just repeat this prayer, Father, I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Jesus, wash me in your blood. Cleanse me of all my sin. I seek you for my life. I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you died and rose again to give me life. And I ask you to come live your life through me. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, it's called a sinner's prayer. If you're lost, if you have turned your back on God, you walked away and, and you prayed that prayer this morning, then the Bible says that you are a new creation in Christ. That you, you are you're a new creature. And old things are passed away. All things are made new. That your sins have been washed away. Thrown into the sea of forgetfulness as they never happened. I believe... It tells us also that your name's now been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And you now have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And that joy that I just talked about is going to flood your heart and flood your soul. Because now he's making you two new things in your life. I ask, I challenge you to reach out to someone on this page or, or someone else you may know. And, and, and you need to be discipled. You need to find a, a, a church that you can connect with, even through social media right now. Because I will tell you this, church. It may not be tomorrow. It may not be the next day or the next week or the next week. But we will be back in this building worshiping God again. But it's going to be a different worship. It's going to be a different atmosphere. It's going to be a different purpose. It's going to be a different mindset. It's all going to be different. Because God's not calling us back to the same old things. Amen? God bless you. God, listen. Thank you. Yes. Listen, we love you all. We love you dearly. And I know that... I know that, th that this is not easy on anybody. Everybody's had to face their own battle with this. And it's, it's different for everybody. But I'm here to tell you that... It may be different.